Hey, this is Ryan from Web Eminence. Google Analytics is the best way to measure and analyze your website traffic. But for the typical small business owner with a website, it can be pretty overwhelming to log in and try to make sense of all the data. I'm kind of a data geek myself and it's even a bit confusing for me. So in this video, I'm showing you the top few things to look at in your Google Analytics account. It should only take you a few minutes, but will give you a great overview of your website traffic. First, you have to have a Google Analytics account set up and linked to your website. So check out my other video on how to do that first. So after you log in to Google Analytics and your account is tracking data for you know, a significant period of time, you know, hopefully at least 30 days, you can log in and see some data. So on the homepage where you'll land, you'll see these cards here that give you a quick overview of some different uh, questions that are answered within your account. Uh, here are some basic stats here. Uh, it shows you active users on your site, which we'll talk about. Insights in the top right is pretty useful. How do you acquire users? Where are your users? When do your users visit? So this is a great thing to check out. Spend a few minutes here getting a quick overview of what's happening uh, with your website traffic. And then you could click each of these links to dive in a little bit deeper to the data. In the first section I want to show you is audience overview. So the navigation is on the left hand side. I'm going to click on audience which opens a drop down and then click on overview. So this page is going to give me a basic overview on my audience. I'll switch it to 30 days here. You could pick any time frame you want and click apply. So this shows the number of users, the number of sessions, which is basically the, the main number you're looking at to, to understand how many people visited your website, and then the number of sessions per user, which is why users is um, less than sessions. Some people are gonna visit uh, or be returning visitors. And here you can see the number or the percentage of returning visitors in this pie graph here. So my percentage of returning visitors is around 8%. You can see the total page views, pages per session, session duration, which is how long people stay on your site on average. And then the bounce rate is the number of people who leave after only viewing one page. Um, so this is pretty high for me, but I have a lot of blog traffic where people read a single blog post and then leave because they had their question answered. So typically on a small business site where people are probably and hopefully click around your site a little bit, you'd want to have this lower, um, probably below 70, maybe even closer to 50 or 60% would, would be good. There's some other data on this page like language, uh, country, you could click on these links to see, for example, here, which country your visitors are coming from. So this is a pretty high level view of your audience. Under any of these categories on the left hand side, you can definitely click on some of the other links or click the links on the overview page to dig a little bit deeper into the data. The next section is called acquisition and again we'll click on overview first to get an overview of um, where you're getting your traffic from. So this pie graph is definitely important to look at. It'll show you a breakdown of where your traffic is coming from. They call it channels. So in my case, my top channel is organic search. Direct would be people who are maybe clicking a link in an email or entering uh, my URL manually into a browser. There's a social referral would be clicks usually from another website and then paid search and display is also uh, paid search in this case. So this pie graph is probably one of the most important things for you to look at when you log into Google Analytics. You scroll down below, you'll get more data on each of your different channels. For example, you can see how many users came from your different channels and then look at some of the statistics on these different channels. For example, bounce rate changes with different channels. So it's much lower for referral traffic and it's very high bounce rate for organic search. And again, this is people visiting my blog, probably only looking at one page and then leaving. And then you can click on some of these different uh, columns here. For example, I could click on duration and that will show me the duration uh, for these different channels. So the, the amount of time people are on the site on average. So again, it's lower for organic search. People coming from paid search are on the site much longer. 
minute and 58 seconds on average. So that is the overview tab under acquisition. Again, under this acquisition tab, you can definitely click on some of these other items to dig deeper into the data. The next one I want to show you is behavior. If you click on behavior, you're going to first go to overview. And this is going to tell us how people are behaving on our site. We saw some of this already under audience, like the bounce rate, average, a time on page. So this section is pretty useful because you can start to see which pages are most popular on your website. So in the bottom right here, I can see the top pages, the top 10 sorted by page views. So I have a blog post here that is getting the most uh, traffic for the last 30 days. So in this case, I might want to take a look at this blog post, make sure it's updated, make sure um, maybe I have a call to action or maybe some way to engage with readers to keep them on my site or maybe sell them a product or service or just make sure the blog post, again, is updated and useful to my readers. You can get a little bit more data on your top pages by going to site content under behavior and then clicking on all pages or landing pages. And that's going to give us a listing of our top pages and then you can scroll through. Uh, see, I have 189 of them on this list, but it's sorted by the top of page views. I could sort by these different columns like bounce rate, for example, to see which uh, of my landing pages has the top or the highest and lowest bounce rate. And you could use this, for example, to maybe fix or try to lower the bounce rate on some of your high bounce rate pages to keep people on your site longer. Another great visual view that I like to look at to see how people are behaving on the site is click on behavior flow under behavior. And this gives you this uh, visual kind of flow graph of how people are flowing through your website. So you could look at starting pages here and this with just the, the slash here would be my um, home page. And then this red kind of drop off graphic here shows a percentage of people dropping off from the home page. And then this shows them flowing through to different pages on my site, like a services page, a pricing page, an about page. And then it shows their first, second, and third interaction. And then you could add more steps. So this is a good visual view. It's useful, but it's also kind of just fun to see uh, how people are flowing through your site. You should be able to get some, some useful data from this, similar to the uh, other data we just looked at, but it's more of a visual view. You're probably noticing there's a lot of options that I'm not showing you, like adding segments. So the different options can get pretty complex, and I don't want to get into too much detail in this video, but I just wanted to let you know that there are a lot more ways to manipulate the data to get more useful information for your specific website. So another section I want to show you is real time. So that's the first option. If you click on real time, you can click on overview. This section might be more fun than useful, but I do think it, it does have some use. So you might not want to spend too much time in this section if you don't get a lot of traffic. Uh, I have about 100, or 100 to 200 sessions per day. So if I'm looking at this real time um, graph, I usually see visitors um, pretty consistently. It's Friday afternoon now, so traffic is kind of low. Uh, but what this shows you is uh, the active page people are on. And this is literally people that are currently on your site. So right now someone just uh, landed on a blog post of mine. It says which post it is. It gives me the URL here. Shows their location in uh, Washington. So it's kind of fun just to see people visiting your website in real time. But for me, it just creates more of a connection to my traffic and makes me realize that people are actually on my website. It, you can be a little bit disconnected from your website traffic so it's just numbers um, but when you realize there's literally someone on this blog post right now it you know makes you think about you know what's on that blog post um, is it up to date is it readable do I have good images so um, similar to when you're looking at your top pages uh, to see that people are actually on your website in real time on specific pages I think is motivating to um, get your website in order so the last thing I wanted to mention is goals and you'll find goals uh, under the admin section or at least you'll be able to set them up under admin. So that's at the bottom left of this navigation 
here uh, you may have seen goals mentioned or you may see them throughout Google Analytics and um, they're a part of the data in all the different sections we've looked at so you can make your data more meaningful to you by creating goals for example if someone visits your contact page that could be a goal if someone uh, is on your site for one minute that could be a goal if they're on your site for one minute or more I should say so if we go to the admin section I'll show you where you create these uh, under view you can select goals like I have two set up one of them is when someone does a live chat with me on the site one of them is uh, contact form submit so when someone submits a contact form on my site it triggers um, an event which uh, triggers this goal so I can count those and then I can go through all the other stats in Google Analytics uh, to see you know which channels are creating goals and um, which locations are um, creating goals that are uh, fulfilled so I won't spend too much time on this because it can get pretty complex but I did want to let you know that this exists and you may want to read more in the Google Analytics help documents to see how you would create goals uh, you'd start by clicking this red button and go through these steps here to create goals another thing you might want to read about is smart goals and if you utilize smart goals Google Analytics will automatically set up its own measurement to measure when a successful visit occurs and they might do this based on duration how long people are on your site or the number of pages they visit just to give you a measurement of uh, what the best traffic is and then you can uh, use those smart goals within all the data to, to see where your best traffic is coming from I do believe you need to have at least 500 visitors per month in order to use smart goals so that's a quick overview of Google Analytics you probably noticed I touched on maybe 3% of everything or all the different links you could click in Google Analytics but I think uh, that small percentage that I showed you will get you a pretty good overview of your traffic especially if you're a small business owner with a website you probably don't have a lot of time to dig deep into the data but um, looking at these few pages is going to give you a really good broad overview of your traffic and hopefully help you to uh, take away some meaningful data that's going to allow you to maybe change some things on your website or take some action to improve the overall experience of your visitors and get better results from your website so if you found that useful make sure to click the like button subscribe I'll definitely be doing some more videos on Google Analytics in the future like maybe getting deeper into some of the different reports or uh, maybe one on creating goals as well let me know in the comments uh, what questions you have about Google Analytics what videos and topics would be helpful for you and we will see you on the next video